day number two here at Hong Kong Disneyland. I'm still joined by, while well, I say that, I'm going to be joined by him for the next two and a half weeks. Milkman himself, he's got one this morning, first That's thing. One. Ready for day number two? Yes, yeah, it's a bit warm. It is, it's the humidity. If you didn't watch day one's vlog, go and check it out. Uh, but if you didn't, don't worry, we're going to have a fantastic day today. I'm just kidding, we're going to experience a lot of different Sorry, attractions. Child. Child bad okay, it's bad Lots of different things to see at the park today. It's going to be awesome. It's a Friday today, and so far it looks a little bit busy than yesterday. My toe, on the other hand, is really hurt after giving a child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's got bad feet today. Did a lot of walking yesterday, though, to be fair. I've got some miles on the pedometer on the iPhone. <laughs> iPhone little thing for you. So this yeah. is an absolutely 27 beautiful miles park. We yesterday. That's a lot. 27 miles. This is a beautiful park, of course. You've got the castle down the bottom just here, Sleeping Beauty Castle. And of course, all in the background just there, you've got the wonderful landscaping of the area. This morning, we're going to try and make our way over to Grizzly, which was closed yesterday, the runway minecarts, which you can't wait to experience because this is a very unique ride for this park. It's effectively their version of Big Thunder Mountain. I'm not too sure because they say that there's staggered openings and things. I mean, yesterday it's a small world opened a little bit later uh, and things like that. So we're going to try and get down this way and see what time it's going to open. It's going to be a really good day in Hong Kong Disneyland. I worked this out yesterday. Lee Wood's name in Chinese is Lin Mu. Lin Mu? Lin Mu. There we go. Lin Mu. <laughs> Interesting fact in for you. Lin Mu. Mr. Lin Mu, everybody. On that note, let's go. So as we discovered yesterday, quite a few staggered openings across Hong Kong Disneyland. Not too much of a problem. Uh, we just went for a ride on Space Mountain and come back. Uh, but as you can see, Grizzly Gulch, Mystic Point, Toy Story Land, and a partial area of Adventureland open at 11 o'clock, which is half hour after main park opening. Not too bad at all, just a few minutes to go, and then we'll uh, head round to Grizzly Gulch. And here it is in action. It's been closed for two days of scheduled maintenance. Welcome to Grizzly Gulch. Now, we didn't really get to see this area to its full potential yesterday, so I thought we'll start the vlog around here and have a good look around, get some on-ride footage of the highlight attraction for this area, which does look absolutely stunning. And as we mentioned yesterday, the architecture does look very, very similar uh, to the Grizzly Rapids uh, over at Disney California Adventure in California. But this area is lovely. It's very, very nice. It's a Vacoma roller coaster. It's very quiet, isn't it? It is very quiet. Well, it's quite funny, actually. They did a rope drop just there, and then everybody ran towards Tarzan's treehouse to get the rafts over to the <laughs> island. Better for us. Instead of coming here, all going to Mystic Manor. Uh, but yeah, it's a Vacoma roller coaster that opened in 2012 as part of the park's big expansion on this side that did include uh, quite a few attractions. It's like Big Thunder Mountain. It is. It's great around here. I really like it. I like how the buildings have got quite a bit of colour to them as well, which is really nice. It's the wildest ride in non-mainland China. <laughs> and of course we had all the geysers that we saw yesterday all the way around there. Here we go. And here it is, Big Grizzly Mountain. Here Run away minecarts. Well, not how many minute wait? Oh wait, nothing. We're the first one to... Looking forward to this. A brand new credit. No, I don't have and this is the first time we've actually got credits together this trip, isn't it? As you yes. worked out yesterday. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah crazy. This isn't trip, it? we've never actually got credits before. Here we go. Here crazy. we go. Prospectors enter here. Oh, look at the detail in here, guys. It does say Big Thunder up there as well. Oh, really? Oh, awesome. box, it's a Big Thunder. I like how they've got all these photos. So first thing to notice about the queue line for this is unlike Big Thunder Mountain, it's actually really spacious. I mean, it's not like a big cattle pen in one building. Uh, it's all sort of separated into different buildings. Ah, oh, this is really good. And how many re-rides will this be having today? I'll look at that up there. It's good. Oh, so many details. I love it. It's one thing what Disney do better than anyone else, little details everywhere. And here's the station. This looks great. Oh wow. Very impressive queue area. Shaft number two. So much detail. This ride has a bit of a twist as well, as you'll see from the on-ride POV. So let's get on board. Our first ever ride on Big Grizzly Mountain Runaway Minecars. Up we go on the left hill. Oh, hello. Is 
Two. This is where this ride has a bit of a surprise. For anyone who's a fan of Expedition Everest, you might enjoy this. off a big grizzly mountain and in fact we went round again and had a second ride because to be honest where are the queues I mean Crazy it's so I'm quiet right. isn't it we went straight back around and uh, got another go but yeah I'll share my review on it uh, well of course we went straight out of the station down a little bit of a pre-drop uh, and then went up into that first lift hill which was an enclosed lift hill uh, with you saw with the bear animatronic at the side as well and I thought you know what a really good start you get to the top it's like danger mine to the left and then you got another shaft that leads off to the right. Of course, in true Disney fashion, oh, we go down the no entryway down the danger route. And off we go, the ride begins. A very, very slow start on this coaster. Uh, like I say, uh, here we go, here it is in action. Very, very slow start on this coaster for the first section. Uh, to be honest, we came into the first sort of, uh, well, the second sort of section, which was the lift hill, and I felt quite underwhelmed with the first section of the ride. I thought it had some really nice theming, but in terms of a coaster, I thought this is actually quite poor. Uh, then we got up to the lifter, which as you saw from the footage, takes you up there uh, and then it releases you straight away. What I really liked about that is there was no holding, not like Everest where you have to wait for the track change. Uh, obviously when Everest first opened it was the quickest one in the world for track changes. Now it gets put to shame by coasters like this and 13 at Alton Towers. Uh, and obviously then it goes down backwards. Brilliant. Really good part of the coaster. So interactive with the area. I will show you some off-ride shots in a second once I finish the review. Uh, and then you go around that section, really, really good backwards section, uh, a couple of nice helixes. Again, it's actually quite slow, not that much to it in terms of the coaster. Then we came down uh, just around the bottom here. Uh, there's a tunnel down the bottom, like a shaft there. You've got a big live action scene going up the top with animatronics, uh, smoke coming out like an explosion. Really, really good. And then you get uh, quite a forceful launch, I'd probably say around 35, 40 mile an hour launch. That isn't an actual figure, that's just me guessing. Uh, I will look at the figures and see what it is. But uh, yeah, and that was definitely the highlight of the ride. That launch, really, really good. Brings you all down this section here and you go all underneath. To be honest, you can't really see much of the track from here. It's quite a terrain-based coaster. It's very low down. Uh, but my overall review, I can't help but feel disappointed by this Disney attraction. It's not very often I say it, um, but I would take Big Thunder Mountain over it. I think the theming is very, very good. Uh, but in terms of the actual coaster, I'm a little bit disappointed with this one. It's rare that I say that for a Disney attraction. I think it's very, very nice, but is it bad that I'd actually probably take 13 at Alton Towers over it as well? Uh, not in terms of the coaster, but in terms of, in terms of the, the theme in it, it's brilliant, you know, but in terms of the coaster, I mean, look at it, it's just moved around a bit, bit too slow for me. Uh, but yeah, don't get me wrong, it's a very, very nice ride. I'd give it uh, overall experience to me, six out of 10 on that one. 
of that. That's beautiful, though. Like I mentioned yesterday, you've got all your classic Disney on the inside of the railway, and then when they did all this expansion, they bring you underneath the tunnel into the area, and then built all this area, Mystic Point and Toy Story Land. Alex, Hello. over to you. Oh, I completely disagree with most of that, so I... Uh, I <laughs> That's why we all have different I, opinions. I absolutely love the coaster, I do. I think, as a family coaster, it just works. It's themed, it's... it's, it's <laughs> I know. It's a good time, it likes me, uh, and I like it. I agree, it's no Everest. It's, it's Definitely it's, not, it's, you can't even put them in the same no. category. It's, similar, it's like a cross between Big Thunder Mountain and Everest, sort of taking the best features of both into one, but into a very sort of minor family coaster. But it beats 13 for me at Alton Towers, personally. When you said that, I, I disagree with that. It does beat 13 for me, because I know 13 is quite intense. This one just works as a family coaster, and as an overall theme and experience, I was absolutely in love with it. And with the, with the cross between the animatronics and the coaster, absolutely in awe. And you know what? I, 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 I would go as far as to say it beats possibly, I'd say two of my big Thunder Mountains. And what's your favourite, Paris? Yeah. Still, yeah. Paris. Paris is still my favourite. I mean, you look at Paris, Big Thunder, and then you look at this, and in my eyes, there's no comparison. Uh, but yeah, don't get me wrong, the theming is gorgeous, and I love this whole area. Uh, but I say all that, I'd actually be more disappointed if this was a big Thunder Mountain here, because I do like how it's different. So it does get brownie points for that. I do like how these Disney parks uh, have tried something very, very different. And we're going to get to see that when we go to Shanghai Disneyland in a few days. God, it seems so weird the saying G that. The G's you feel <laughs> yeah, there is really one point, team. actually, that I forgot to mention, where you do get some G-force. And it is on the final section of the ride, just as a helix over there. Uh, but yeah, like I say, I've, I've come off disappointed. It's not very often I say that. That just goes to show you guys might come here and have completely disagree with me, or you might completely disagree with Alex, but it doesn't matter. We all have different opinions on these rides, and that's what makes being an enthusiast and that we all respect each other's opinions. I've got to add, though, probably one of the smoothest Vacomas I've ever done. It is, yeah. It's, I think it's smoother than Millennium yeah. at Fantasy uh, Island, yeah. and that had the award for smoothest before. I, so. I genuinely think, like, I, I didn't, we didn't need to hold on. We didn't feel like we'd being thrown out of our seat. We, we, we it wasn't going like, fast actually, enough. We had a, yeah. Well, yeah. We, we actually had our arm. You know, we were quite relaxed. It was cozy. Yeah. Yeah, actually. I give you that. It was a relaxing coaster, but yeah, for a family coaster, I expected a bit more from that. But don't get me wrong. Every, everything else has exceeded expectations for me. It's not very often you get a minor family coaster. When I say minor, I mean not heavily, heavily intense family coaster. Just relaxing, gentle family coaster with such a grand scale on such a grand scale. So I think that's probably why we're not quite used to it because we don't tend to see this very often. If I take, say, Octonauts at Alton Towers, for example, right, I'd class that as a minor family coaster, similar to this. It's not got any sort of level of intensity, but this is on such a bigger scale. I don't think we're quite used to this, in the, especially not in the UK. Yeah. That's why I think it's so different taking quite a lot of getting used to. But I, I'd love to see more co minor family coasters. Like so would I, but just knock it up about 20 miles per hour, please. <laughs> but yeah, it, I love a good family coaster, as you know. But for me, yeah, that's my review on this one. I'll show you some off-ride shots of it in action. Don't get me wrong, the area is stunning, but the ride is a disappointment from Disney for me. Disappointed with to something that's one of the best in the world. We're going back on Mystic Manor. Gonna get some more footage on here for you guys that didn't watch our vlog from day one. If you want to see a bit of a different perspective on the ride uh, than this one that you're gonna see now, check out day one. Hopefully, we're gonna get a bit of a different sort of run through this time. So obviously, with it being a trackless dark ride, you tend to spin in different directions and go down a few different tracks and that sort of thing. It's one of the few Disney Park dark rides that I'll go on, not just for the air conditioning. <laughs> Want to be on here. It is amazing, isn't it? So much detail on this ride, so uh, let's get back on.
So we just had another ride on Mystic Manor. Really, really good, fantastic dark ride. You right, Alex? Do you enjoy that? <laughs> <laughs> How was Mystic Manor? Give me a hook shot. Nah, nah, you're alright. What are you doing? To Releasing me? another load. Here we are, look at this. This is a, <laughs> this is a really nice water tower oh, effect, just doing grizzly gulps. Humidity, no more. I don't even hook on this one. On the raft now here in Frontierland, on the way to Tom Sawyer. Oh wait, we're in Adventureland, and we're on the raft to Tarzan's Treehouse. And this is dedicated to the one and only theme park worldwide's very own Chris Franklin. Everybody, if you don't have a clue what I'm going on about, Chris loves carousels, he loves trees, and yeah, he just gets so emotional over these. All the Disney parks that have got these, he gets very emotional. So here we go. This is just for you, Chris. We're coming all the way over to the Sorry. island. <laughs> it's just sweat, it's not tears. Hold on tight. We're gonna bump. You might get a bit of a bang now. There we go. Ready for your bang? I don't want a bang. You're gonna get one now. Oh, here we go. Uh, whoa. whoa, my God. <laughs> That's quite a good one as well. Good banging. To the tree house. Best tree house so far, we're not even on the main structure yet. It's got this bridge leading over to it. Got a lookout tower at the top there. Very, very nice. The little walkthroughs like this that really make Disney parks, all the detail. Especially the fire scene, which is in box two. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> Tarzan and I invite you to explore our home. Even Tarzan believes in health and safety nowadays. He does. <laughs> I think we're going to get some really nice views here. Oh, look at that. It's got to be the best adventure land out of all the Disney parks. I mean, look at that. Jungle River Cruise down the bottom and the hills of Hong Kong in the background. Gorgeous. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on in there. <laughs> Whatever's happening looks like fun. This is really nice in here. Get a really unique view of Main Street USA from here as well. Didn't quite think of that when they built this. There you go. Looking down over the rooftops of Main Street USA. Never had it on a gramophone before. Normally it's played on a piano, this. It's the music from the Swiss family tree house. Really, really nice. Swiss Kapolka! Robinson's family tree. Da 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 It's so good, I love it. Oh, I hope we're off with some more. Hello! Hey, hello everybody! You're on Theme Park Worldwide on the YouTube. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm glad we've had that. Tip well worth it. Worth coming over just for that. And now for today's song of the island. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
you should see that one while I <laughs> That was like the best thing ever, nearly as good as this animatronic elephant. Look at this, nice and realistic movements on that. Oh, oh. the elephant back to trunk and say goodbye to the circus. Off she ran with the trunk and the trunk, 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 trunk. Main Street USA after watching the Festival of the Lion King. Now I expected it when I went in for it to be very very similar to Festival of the Lion King over in Animal Kingdom at Walt Disney World and in a way it kind of was but it did have quite a few differences as well. Uh, one of those being the stage in the middle. Uh, over at Walt Disney World the stage actually gets brought in from the side. Here they got like a massive automated stage that like lifts up and down which I thought was really cool. Other things in there the fire scene was a lot better. Instead of just having one man with fire spinning around in the middle uh, you actually had well two of those and then there was some flame machines and then four people stood with torches around the edge as well uh, so I thought that was really really good. 
In terms of the overall production, it just felt a lot more polished, if you like, uh, than the version in Animal Kingdom. Whether that's because it's newer or not, I'm not too sure. Uh, if it is, I mean, I'm not too sure on the opening dates for both of those. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really nice circular theatre, as you saw there from the shots. And it was a really, really nice production. The only thing what you don't really get in that one that you do in Orlando uh, is you get like the monkey scene with them all bouncing on the trampolines. You didn't get that one there. Uh, but overall, I thought that was a lot better production. Uh, I thought the whole sort of choreography and that was even better uh, than Festival of Lion King in Animal Kingdom. And anyone who's watched that vlog before will know that I absolutely love that show. Uh, so yeah, brilliant. They've done a really good job with that. Uh, fantastic, definitely the best version. But again, as I've said numerous times throughout these vlogs already, it's great to have the different versions at the different Disney parks. I mean, that's what it's all about. And that's why we're doing this trip to see all these different Disney parks from across the world. Um, so yeah, really, really nice show. 10 out of 10 with that one. And I hope you enjoyed the shots of uh, that. Now we're here on Main Street USA. And of course we came in here yesterday and did day one vlog. Now I've walked in again today and I've thought, there's something missing with this Main Street. Uh, can anybody tell what it is? Especially if I angle the camera a bit more like this. Anybody guess what's missing? <laughs> if you haven't guessed already, of course, the other Disney parks on Main Street USA have got the tracks down the middle, they've got the rails. Uh, after doing a little bit of research, there's actually no horse-drawn carriages at all on this Main Street. Uh, this is mainly due to when it opened in 2005, it was an, a budget Disney park, so to speak, when it first got built, uh, back in the Disney decade, so to speak. Uh, and with this, like I say, on the original concept art, it did have horse-drawn vehicles with a trackway, but it actually never came to light. So here you go, Main Street without any uh, tracks down the front. Really, really interesting that one. Talking of tracks, we're going up to Main Street Station. Once Alex is back from getting some milk. Oh, here he is from the bakery. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going on the Main Street Station and we're going to have a grand circle tour of Hong Kong Disneyland. Your attention, please. Hong Kong, Hong Kong. Let's go. <laughs> Attention please, today the train surface only for one way -way surface, one way to the next train station, center train station. All passengers, all passengers, please exit the train at the next train station. So here we are on the Hong Kong Disneyland Railroad. It's worth noting, just like Disneyland over in California, all the seats on the carriages are all pointing this way inside the park. Uh, that was done at the original Disneyland because obviously the outside world was just there. They wanted to make sure that everyone was facing into the magic. Uh, so they put all the cast areas behind and obviously you could see out as well with the landscaping. A bit like you can here actually with all these uh, buildings behind. I want you to stay facing that way so you can see into the magic. Very, very clever how it's done. And I do like how they've done that here as well. Even though here now, when we go through some of the areas, obviously like Toy Story Land and Grizzly Gulch, is actually going to be behind us, and you're not going to be able to see that, which is quite a shame. Very nice carriages on this, though. A bit of a different colour scheme. Really nice. So this is a bit strange, you're actually being made to leave the train to walk back round again in Fantasyland. That's very different, I've never actually had to do that before. Not too sure if that's the regular thing or not, but uh, yeah, there's no queue anyway, luckily. Obviously, we've just got to get, everyone's got to get off the train in Fantasyland and go round. Bit of a shame you can't stay on and do the grand circle tour, so to speak, from Main Street, but uh, not too much of an issue, we'll just reboard the train here. Really nice loco on this one down the front there as well. I'll try and get some shots when we get back to Main Street. You get some nice views of fantasy land from the train, but again, it's a shame because it's a small world. It's behind us, just there. That's funny the route, really, isn't it? Well, I think as things have expanded and stuff, obviously, when it originally opened, bear enough, there were people looking that way. But as things have expanded out, I think uh, now, really, it could do with the seats turning forward. And here's a little closer look at the Hong Kong Disneyland Railroad. This train in particular, Roy O. Disney. Very nice.
So we've just come off the Disneyland Railroad, and as you saw by the footage, it was a really nice ride, but definitely the shortest of the trains at the Disney parks. It's made up, though, by this absolutely fantastic view just here. Look at this, all the hillside in the background, all across Main Street. And there's Alex on the omnibus, so we're going to go down and join him. What we did also see just from the train, uh, something really exciting, actually, we actually saw Autopia all around the back, an abandoned Autopia. It shut exactly a year ago. Uh, to make way for a Marvel attraction which is coming in the next few years. Obviously the Iron Man ride's already opened and it said there's going to be Marvel next year and there's going to be Marvel in a few years as well. Uh, just a little look at the future plans here as well. I remember when it was announced but uh, Frozen Land's going to be coming and that's going to be built just behind the Fantasyland train station where we was just, which is quite interesting as well. So lots to look forward to in the future. We are to make our way on. And here he is. Out of the front. Oh, <laughs> and then the trip's over. Send me a postcard next time. Sure. Oi. Thank you. Oh, this is nice. Up to the omnibus. Just saying how we got some good views of uh, abandoned Autopia. It is, yeah. Up there. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? But uh, yeah, more Marvel is on its way, apparently. So we'll, yeah, let's have a ride down Main Street. Hashtag one Marvel of the vehicles. Takeover. Yeah. I do love a good ride on the Main Street transportation. I haven't seen the fire truck here though. Obviously they've got the fire station, which here is a stroller rental it seems, obviously at Disneyland in California. It's in the same place just there. However, that was of course Walt's apartment and you can just have a little walk around the bottom. But at least they've put it to good use here and so at least they're not claiming and saying this is where Walt lived. You know, it's a stroller rental, it's doing its purpose. Oh now I've never seen that before in a Disney park. Now that's really nice, because obviously at Casey's Corner they normally have a piano. With there not being a cases here, it must be portable. Oh yeah, that's really nice. Good spot there by the milkman. Have you done any rounds yet on Main Street? I have a name, you know. You delivered. Sorry, what was it? Sorry, Alex. I say Alex, yeah. No, it's all the milk. <laughs> oh, now that's lovely. Listen to that. Oh, I really like that. What a really nice touch. And the best view from the front of the omnibus on Main Street USA. In terms of crowd levels today, again, it's a little bit quieter than I was expecting. Well, I say a little bit, quite substantially quieter than I was expecting today. Hello, everyone. When you see the bakery there, it's a sausage roll. It's basically a cold hot dog. Is that what it is? It's a sausage roll we're used to. It's just a, a piece from of bread Greg's, with a sausage yeah. in it. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that view. I really do like the hillside down the bottom and of course as we mentioned in yesterday's day one vlog a massive expansion plan here over the next few years including a complete redesign of the central hub uh, for 2019 and that will include enhancements to Sleeping Beauty's castle. It's going to look amazing when it's complete. Uh, they're actually keeping the bottom section and then they're going to be expanding upwards massively. I say when it's finished it's probably going to be three if not three and a half times the height of what it is now. Again, that's just a guess from looking at concept art, but it'll be really impressive, especially with the hills behind it. Just had another ride on what in our opinion is the best is a small world we've ever been on a really really nice version of that and if you do want to see some on ride footage check out our vlog from day one here at hong kong disneyland that we filmed yesterday for some shots all inside that awesome ride i think we'll have a bit more of a look around Fantasyland, uh, maybe do Dumbo's or something like that. I mean, we've got to do Dumbo's, haven't we? It's a Disney big classic. Big Q, though, isn't it? Yeah, big Q. Might be able to use, uh, try and get some sort of fast pass for it if he's got one, or if not, let's wait for it. Go and have a little look. I mean, in terms of queue lines, we've not had to wait much at all, have we? Uh, I mean, it's been very, very lucky, this trip. I'm not sure how it's going to be at the other Disney parks. Obviously, with Shanghai being the newest one, I think it's going to be a lot busier. And of course, when we get over to uh, Tokyo, I think it's going to be ridiculously busy, especially in Disney Sea. What's this? Ah, here we go. This is like, uh, oh, this is nice. How did we not notice this yesterday? 9,625 kilometers. Wow. Mumbai. Nairobi. Bangkok. Manila. New York. New York, New York. So, that's really nice. Let's 
to get on board the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. Off we go on our 45 second cycle. This is literally a short cycle. Round, 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 are you dizzy yet, viewers? I'm dizzy. Sitting there eating your spaghetti. I don't want to eat spaghetti. Hey, it's a bit of a barrel five first, isn't it? Barrel seven. Barrel ten on the... Come on, babe, what? Barrel ten on the Duncan barrel. Whoa. Remain seated, thank you. Nice work, I've done all week. Yeah, I think I'm a bit too dizzy now. End of the ride, end of the cycle. for Dumbo, it's 20 minutes, so I'm not going to bother with something what's identical to the other Disney parks. But I thought we'd come and appreciate this, the exterior Mystic Manor and just have a closer look at that. I mean, look at all the building detail around here. It's stunning. It's really nice architecture. Really nice lights and things. It kind of comes across a bit like Phantom Manor, which is, of course, on the hillside in Frontierland at Disneyland Paris. And it also kind of, in a way, reminds me of the glamour that the Tower of Terror's got as well, with all, like, the big staircases and gates and that sort of thing. Kind of has that same sort of feel to it as well. But one thing for sure is it's a very, very impressive building. Lots of forced perspective on there as well. Like you look at them windows right up the top up there. They're actually tiny because it's not that tall of a building really. It does look really, really nice. I want to see this really at, at night, but I'm not sure if we're going to be able take to. Take your screwdriver off you before you try and take the mystic. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's a shame they don't sell those. Over at Walt Disney World and Disneyland, you can buy the Haunted Mansion plaques, and I'm sure you've seen it back at my uh, merch collection. That'd, that'd be nice. Be gorgeous. I'd pay a good, uh, good amount for them. Yeah, from your screwdriver. Just little things like this in the floor and. God, it was a massive expansion there when they did all this. It's really, really nice. There's no audio around here, really. I think that's kind of the only. Yeah. Like a, yeah, it's quite. Like, you've got, the... like, you have got audio. It's just the sound of birds and yeah. ambience, isn't it? It's not like a like score, so to home, speak. Yeah. 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 You look at that. It's amazing. You can't see the warehouse. It's all stunning. So much detail. I'd love to see that at night, but I just don't know if we're going to be able to because this area just shut in preparation for the fireworks. So I'm not too sure if we're going to be able to come around and see it. But uh, yeah, having a really nice day so far. And we've still got one of the big stage shows to go and see, which I believe is quite similar to Mickey and the Magical Map over at Disneyland. It's something to the wondrous book or something like that it's called. Uh, so I think it's similar in the fact that you've got this magical book instead of a map. Uh, I think so. Anyway, it might be. Di I think it's going to be different, but same. If you know what I mean. It's going to be quite an indoor venue. Yeah, yeah, sure. indoor venue. So, looking forward to giving that a go. Just back round here, and it makes you realise how beautiful Grizzly Gulch is as an area. It is a stunning area. I do really, really like it round here. A bit of a different take on the the old frontier. I just would have liked it if the coast was a bit more forced. Well, even Big Thunder Mountain comes across as a much more bigger thrill ride than this. Still worth another go, though. BGM. So just put on Grizzly on the front, and actually it's a lot better coast on the front, even more force. It's still quite slow, he's pulling funny faces at me. Still quite slow, but a lot more enjoyable on the front, actually getting to see the elements a lot more and feel them near misses, especially the corner after that launch where you uh, go down, really good near miss there, uh, which like is good. It's about time I said something actually quite interesting rather than stupid. Uh, hey! Everyone's sat there at home clapping. <laughs> they just dropped the pizza and like, yeah. Come on then, Baywatch. Right, follow me this way. <laughs> okay. So. 
right here. There are Professor Porter's training post. Which is a gift shop. But if you look at the gift shop and look at the sort of structure, you very much see an enchanted tiki room. You do see that to me looks just like where a tiki room either is in the future or was gonna go. You've got like an outdoor patio seating area which could have been used quite nice as a pre-show for the tiki room there. It's like your queue line and pre-show. With your doll whip stand right there. Yeah. I've got to say something stupid, otherwise I'm not me, am I? And then obviously you've got your main building and then you've got like your exit pathway, which actually is a corridor just round there, which would make perfect sense for right, like, the toilets are, yeah, that yeah, would have been the exit. Yeah. An actual perfect pathway, which actually would make sense for the tiki room, whether that was on the initial plans or not, we don't know, we haven't actually looked, but you know, we think that would be a perfect. I mean, you look at it from here, especially if you imagine, yeah, it could have been. It even looks like it was built for like a queue entrance here, doesn't it? Does. it? And one of the things we've noticed along with this trip so far, when we go to Tokyo, we're actually getting a tiki room, but it's, actually, it's actually a stitch takeover from Milan Stitch. Yeah! Um, we love Stitch. Me and Charlotte love Stitch. You love I miss stitch, Charlotte. It's going to be different. It's going to be a different culture, a different language, even. So I look forward to seeing it, but hopefully, we get in the tiki 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 room. We're leaving the totem pole in place. It is crazy, isn't it? Uh, anyway, we're going to go and watch the parade again, which was really, really good yesterday. Of course, if you want to see the parade here, the daytime parade, then check out yesterday's day one vlog here from the park. And if you want to see Paint the Night Parade, stick about because that's coming up later on in this vlog here from day two at Hong Kong Disneyland. We'll see you a little bit later on, but we're going to go and watch a big indoor stage show that I can't wait to see here at the park. We'll see you a little bit later on. Shut up. So just before we go and watch the big stage show, we thought we'd come and see Chewie again. If you saw day one's vlog from yesterday, we had a fantastic meet and greet with Chewie. And the meet and greets here, it's worth pointing out, the queues don't get that big at all, especially for Star Wars characters. Literally, this is the wait for Chewie, us and some other people. Let's go and head in and... Uh, <laughs> Look he, he's big. Yeah, I'll say it over here. Hello, hello, oh, hello. He's a big oh. man, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so scared. Oh, oh okay. Oh. Oh, 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 Nice. <laughs> very nice. Very good. Oh, very good. Very nice. Oh, oh, oh thank you. You're so cute. Bye-bye. Bye, Chewie. Bye, Chewie. Bye, Chewie. See ya. Bye. Thank you very much. Oh. That is. Big agree with saying amazing. Got a little sticker as well. Oh. Nice. Push the doors. Here we go. Ooh. Fire exit. Oh. See you at the show. So we're back in Fantasyland where we're going to make a visit to the Storybook Theatre, home to Mickey and the Wondrous Book. I really like the sign up there. I'm not too, too sure if you can pick that up. It's like it got fibre optic sort of lights behind it. That's really nice. A nice little effect there is on that. Right, we're going to head inside. This looks like an indoor venue. And this looks fantastic. Five o'clock showtime. Let's go. Some really nice venues here at the park. Quite a lot of stage shows here as well, it's worth noting, which is good. A bit like Disneyland Paris at the moment. They've got quite a few stage shows going on, which is great to see. Of course, it's the 25th anniversary over at Disneyland Paris at the moment. And we'll be back there in November, where me and Charlotte are going to be visiting four or five days. It's going to be really good. I have a friend who does theme park audio. Hey, it's Nick Hudson who does theme park audio. Hey. <laughs> there he is. Let's go and have a look inside this venue. So we're about to go into the Storybook Theatre. Let's go and have a little look in here. Oh, wow. What a venue. Look at this. Oh, this is beautiful. It's benches, but at least they've got a backrest to them. Oh, this is really nice. <laughs> this is a very nice venue. You can smell that sort of dry icy smell. You reckon? Should we go down here? Yeah. Oh. Here we are. Oh, that's great. Well, I'll show you some highlights of the show. Mickey and the Wondrous Book here at Hong Kong Disneyland. One of the last highlights for us to see from this park. Hey, 
清楚啊，高飞。本魔法故事书应该喺呢度嘅。
fed up of going to Disney parks and people that cry now. <laughs> I'm only joking. That has to be the best Disney stage show I've ever seen. Out of the four Disney parks that I've been to, the four Disney Magic Kingdom style parks, that is incredible. It's better than anything I've seen. That was stunning, wasn't it? <laughs> what a fantastic sort of production. With, I don't know where to start. Everything, everything. The, the set pieces, uh, the, the vocals in there, the amount that was rammed into just a half an hour show as well, the talking character in there as well. Uh, of course, you've got Mickey in there and everything, and some really nice transitions. It was basically like Mickey and the Magical Map, as expected, but it had some different scenes. Some were quite similar as well, like Princess and the Frog, that sort of thing. And uh, there was a few different ones what weren't in that, uh, what were in uh, that show. However, that overall has to be 12 out of 10 production. <laughs> All of it was incredible. The lighting, the sets, the costumes, and just the transitions are amazing. And obviously, Mickey and the Magical Map has got a massive map on the stage. That's got a massive book on the stage. And you see Mickey uh, transition from being there on the stage, uh, then into the actual book itself. It was brilliant. It really was a fantastic show. My favorite scene in there, it's got to be Aladdin, hasn't it? I loved the Aladdin scene. And it brought back some memories of Kelly. And the songs that were in Chinese. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, stop it. I'm gonna get tweets about this. It was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna sing Jurassic Park for me now, aren't you? Why is we walking Disney scene? That's all I can say. Uh, it, the songs that were in Chinese were subtitled in English as well, so you weren't missing anything. And, and to be fair, most of the show was English. When you realised that the subtitles were there on the right hand side. Yeah, well, I was too busy looking at yeah. the, I was focusing on the action. I did have a little zoom in for you guys, uh, just so you could see the subtitles. Because obviously, a lot of it was in another language. However, it was still a fantastic show, sure and I loved you'll it. You'll agree with me on this, but you can't choose a bad point of that show. No, everything was amazing. I loved every scene in that. And happily ever and after. Yeah, I liked how it wasn't sort of... It did, each scene didn't drag on, so no. to speak. It was straight to the point, in the action, and then on to the next. It was completely visible the whole time. It was. It was. We knew what was going on. Ten when. out of ten show. Love to see it again if we could do. Don't know if we're going to get to this trip, but well worth coming out. If you're a big Disney fan of any Disney park out there, then it is worth coming to Hong Kong because Mystic Manor and that are the two highlights of this park for me. And I know I'm giving you a bit of an insight into my highlights of the trip so far. Uh, but yeah, for, for me, Mystic Manor and that are the two massive standouts for and this park. we've left to last as well. Like, it's one of the last things we will do visiting on this trip. I'm, I'm going to remember on. when we walk into Shanghai Disneyland in a couple of days. God, it's so weird saying all yeah. this. We're going to look back on that and think, Hong Kong, what an amazing time we've had. Uh, yeah, Shanghai's got brilliant. a lot to live up to. It really has. But in terms of stage shows, there's so many here, isn't there? There's more stage shows here than the Magic Kingdom. And we haven't watched half of them. Like, there's still the Jedi training. Yeah, game. I mean, there's some of the smaller stuff. Like, if you like Star Wars, we're really not into no. the Jedi train and all that stuff. But of course, you got that. Uh, right over there in the theatre, just there. But of course, uh, Lion King. Yeah, there's so much Paris going on. Paris was really going to show like that. Yeah, it was amazing, wasn't it? It really was. Well, they have in Walt Disney Studios I now. I suppose, but we're we not uh, seeing uh, that yet. Highlight but. is spectacle. Yeah, it does look great, but that is going to be a very tough one to compete with. But we've got two more Disney parks to try yet, so I can't say That's the thing, it, it isn't impossible oh, because it was gorgeous. Until we've done these other two parks, it may, it may, it may not be impossible. And let's face it, we both didn't really know much about that. We knew it existed, but we didn't really know the details. Oh. And wow, brilliant! Ten out of ten. Just done a few re-rides on Grizzly Mountain and also Mystic Manor. Just thought we'd come in here and have a look at some of the theming. Look at this, I noticed these just, I was just looking at him thinking he's a bit freaky. If you actually look at his eyes and follow them. Some really nice details. This is called the Explorers Club. What is he doing? <laughs> I don't know my eyes, it's not so easy. I do like how they have these little carts on display, so you can actually see what food is available. That's quite a nice idea. Some really nice details. You've got Morocco and Egypt, Russia in there, China over there, and India off to the left. Look at this restaurant, really nice. So, around, around the whole restaurant, we've got from the Journal of Lord Henry Mystic notes. Uh, Okay, it tells so all about his Lord travels Henry of the Mystic world. Mystic is obviously the main man himself inside Mystic Manor, that's where he lives. And they are everywhere. 
the description. He used to do every little touch, don't he? They really do. Really amazing. The Imagineers really know what they're talking about. I just thought before we go and watch Paint the Night Parade, the big nighttime parade here at Hong Kong Disneyland, let's have a little walk around the park and see it at night time. In yesterday's day one vlog, we didn't really get to see much of the park at night, obviously because we was waiting for uh, the parade and the fireworks and just sort of hung about on Main Street, really. So I thought tonight it'd be nice to come round and see some of the park. Starting off here in Toy Story Land, which looks really, really nice at night. Obviously, you've got all the lights hanging over here, which look great. Always makes me wonder though how they switched on because they're unplugged. Uh, it's the same in Paris, look. The socket's out. That, that bulb's gone there. I don't know if that's part of the theme or if that's actually gone. Possible. Yeah, this really comes alive in, in the dark. All the little lights coming on. And this is a really good time to come round because it's not pitch black, but it's just dusk. The sun's gone down for the day and we get some really nice shots of all the park with the lights on. Look at Mystic Point in the dark. This looks brilliant, all the lights. I love all those in the trees up there as well. Just outside the restaurant. It's worth pointing out that this time of year, obviously it's June, uh, with us being on the other side of the world, it is going dark quite early. I mean, it's only just gone seven o'clock. It is getting dark, and we've not got long now until paint the night. When can we do that again? Tonight, well, but we don't know after that. It could be a long time before we see paint the night again. Who knows though where it's going? I mean, it was in California. Is it going to go Paris? Is it going to go to Florida? I'm going to place my bets on Florida personally. I reckon Florida. Wow, look at this. So this is really nicely lit. You've got like a purple glow which is coming just from on top of that lamppost just there. A park and shining up and there's a few of those. Oh, wow, look at that. Just giving it that tint of purple on the front. Sorry, all the lights are on inside. That is so nice, that is. Absolutely gorgeous. What a stunning building. The architecture on that is amazing. Really glad we've got to see it as well with all the lighting on. Wow. Now, Grizzly Gulch looks even better at night because you've got, of course, all the geysers that are lit up, all these beautiful buildings like the Lucky Nugget Saloon just here. With it being quite quiet this time of year, the Lucky Nugget's actually been closed. We've not seen that open during our two days here at Hong Kong Disneyland. My voice is starting to go now, and to be honest, I don't think that's due to the normal cause, which is too much shouting and talking. <laughs> yeah, we believe it. I think it's more due to that, that dehydration and the lack of drinks. I don't think I've had anywhere near enough to drink today. My mouth feels really dry. And I think that's the main cause for the loss of voice today. The humidity is crazy. It's 33 degrees, but humidity is crazy, isn't I it? I should give you my possessions. I should go for one more time under the Oh, no, nah, no. Nah. That's what makes you ill, going and getting really cold like Take that. that for me. I ain't going to do that it. Take that for me. Off and you I'm go. I'm going to chuck these into the bag. I'm going to go for a little bit of a paddle, aren't I? A bit of a paddle. It's that warm. I need a paddle. Off he goes. And no one's squirting. <laughs> Well, that was a fail, wasn't it? <laughs> there we go. Grizzly, let's go and have a night ride. Oh, it's a nice light in around. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Wow. We 
we're going the wrong way. I want to go that way, please. Gorgeous. You get a bit of a feel of Radiator Springs racers, don't you? Yeah, you do, yeah. Lovely with the lighting as well. Hashtag rock work. This is definitely a night ride. 100% very nice. Everyone's loving it. Geysers. <laughs> Feels quicker at night as well. The air conditioning in here is amazing. so much faster, it warmed up, that was brilliant. Stunning, stunning. All the words. Oh wow, that was so much better. That's exactly what I was expecting from Big Grizzly Mountain. I mean, it was so much faster than earlier on. At night time, that was really enjoyable. And there was some fantastic lighting all the way around the rocks just here. Hashtag rock work, you might hear me just on the ride. But yeah, that's stunning. I mean, look at it off-ride at night as well. They've really thought about the lighting and wow, that was really good experience. I must admit, you know, that was a lot better than earlier on. I have a smile on my face. <laughs> Can you just admit I'm right, please? Just for you are kind of right I'm just with that right. one. Let me be you're right kind of right. Once, please. Okay, you're right. Thank you. But earlier on, it was a lot slower. I think with it being quite a new Vacoma coaster. It actually is, it takes time throughout the day for it to warm up. I mean, only only 2012, what, five years ago? So I think with the, this, in a few years' time, it'll run a lot better than it does now. And that'll probably be the next time we're here in a few years' time. I mean, this isn't a part what we're going to be coming back to year upon year. It's somewhere that's special, and this is a once-in-a-lifetime trip, if we're doing it all of it together, yeah. So when we come here next, these trees will probably be higher than the mountain, you know, and it'd be yeah. great to come back and see this develop really well. They started out as twigs, those trees. They did. Twigs in the ground. <laughs> All planted yeah. by Disney Imagineering. Lightning McQueen in there. Yeah. I wish. <laughs> see what Alex means, though. Very similar to Cars Land with the feel. Especially going up the lift hill there before the reverse section. I'd say more Cars Land than probably Big Thunder Mountain looking at Yeah, it. yeah, I do, yeah. yeah. I agree, especially with the, I think the colour of the lighting really adds to that. Stunning. Adventureland looks amazing at night, looking over there to Tarzan's tree house. So much lighting on there, look at that. Look at all this fire at night, wow. It's like being in Europa Park. I'm going to say this now, my favourite adventure land out of them all. For me, one 
something that really makes a Disney park is a nighttime parade. When me and Alex went to California and we saw Paint the Night, absolutely fell in love with it. We watched it so much when we was there over the two weeks. And last night, for the first time here, we saw their version of it at Hong Kong Disneyland. And we thought, you know what? It's really, really good. So we're gonna share some highlights from you now of tonight's Paint the Night Parade. It's absolutely fantastic. Make sure you clap and sing along at home and we'll see you afterwards. Here we go, it's Disney's Paint the Night.
This Main Street really does have its own character, and yes, it does look very, very similar to Disneyland in California, as I've mentioned numerous times. But I still think it's got its own charm to it. I think it's lovely, and the little differences they've got, like the different names, like the arcades, and that very Victorian-style archway, what leads in the Emporium. I think it's lovely, I really do. Beautiful. And we just watched the Paint the Night Parade. How was it? I loved it, I love that parade. My favorite parade of all night, of the night of the parade. Well, the worst thing is now, we don't know when, we're not gonna get to see that again. So obviously this is the only one at the moment. There is one sat there, SPNO at the moment. in a warehouse, possibly. Yeah. <laughs> As you can probably hear by the announcement, it is time for the fireworks. Now, I did show these last night, but I'll show you a couple of minutes of footage just to sum up our day here at Hong Kong Disneyland uh, of the firework display. It is fantastic here. We've had a really good time, haven't we? It's been fantastic. Make sure you do check out our vlog from day one yesterday. Well worth checking out. Because uh, we do quite a lot of different stuff, what we didn't do in the video from today. We'll see you after the show. Please join us for this magical show, starting in just 15 minutes. As you've just seen there, the beautiful Disney and the Stars fireworks here at Hong Kong Disneyland. Absolutely gorgeous display and a really nice high budget show here for Hong Kong Disneyland. That sums up our two days we've had here. It's been absolutely stunning, really enjoyed it. Of course, we have stayed in the hotel for four nights and we did visit Ocean Park as well. So make sure you do check out that vlog, which will be online soon here on the channel. Uh, but yeah, it's been absolutely gorgeous. This resort is really good. And to be honest, it's the smallest Disney theme park out there in the world out of all six and I wasn't expecting that much I thought it's not got my favorite area it's not got a frontier land it's not got a Pirates of the Caribbean uh, I didn't know really much about the shows here what it was going to be like I thought Main Street was going to be a big copy of California and it's really not it's got its own identity Adventureland is the best one uh, because of it going all around the lake and the Jungle River cruise of course you've got Mystic Manor that more than makes up for not having a Pirates and some of the other rides and some brilliant shows like earlier on in the vlog you saw the wondrous book the stage show absolutely breathtaking one of the best shows i've ever seen at a theme park and definitely the best disney stage show it was stunning it really was i think this park is fantastic my favorite ride here of course mystic manor and i'd say i've only got one real disappointment from this uh, and that is of course big thunder's version here at the park i enjoyed it at night i thought it was really really nice uh, at grizzly however i still found it a little bit too slow i really did it was okay but I just found it a little bit too slow. I'm sorry, I know you love it. But I was gonna say, I really enjoy Grizzly. Well, it's just at Hong Kong Disneyland alone, like so far we've we've laughed, we've cried, um, yeah. we've, we've smiled and we've frowned, Grizzly. And we've laid, uh, laid in bed. 
And what? With Laid in Bad. And Laid in Bad, yeah. which is what I'm going to do right <laughs> now. But no, yeah. it's, been, it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's so lovely, this place. And it's, it's, it's sad that in a couple of days' time, we're going to be leaving. Well, yeah, that's the thing. It really is. And what have been your highlights and lowlights of, of this Missing Disney Manor, park? incredible. Wondrous book, incredible. Lowlights for me. Fill our magic. <laughs> Fill our magic, as expected, yeah. <laughs> of course. But no, it's just an incredible little result. I like it. It's, it's, got a, it's got a very sort of unique feel rather than a cliche Disney part, and that's what I love about it. Yeah, whereas I do stand by what I said in the vlog and say that it is better, in my eyes, than the Magic Kingdom. It's not better than Walt Disney World in terms of all the parks, but in terms of the actual Magic Kingdom style park, I'd take this. All the views of the hills, and next time we come here, there's probably going to be a frozen land. Uh, there's going to be the castle, which oh. is definitely getting redone, more Marvel. There's a lot going on, and it's going to be very exciting to see the future. So I'd say, what, Mystic Manor was your favourite? What would you say? Definitely. Yeah, I and mean, obviously... And all, until I'm Magic. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to start that now. The wondrous book. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, stunning. Um, that word has been used so much in the last couple of days, stunning. But stunning. It's, it's just been great. It's just been so much better than expected, hasn't it? I, I, you know, I, I have to kind of say that I'd take both Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios below this park. So Hong Kong Disney will beat both of those in my eyes to collaborate. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. I Definitely. It. It's great. Yeah, very, very nice. Uh, in terms of other highlights, what I've enjoyed here, of course, the parades are fantastic. Paint the Night wasn't quite as good as over in California, but it was still great to see it. Uh, Flights of Fantasy that was top notch and the fact that a lot of the floats are inflatable meant they are some of the biggest floats I've ever seen at a Disney park. Uh, it's just been lovely just walking around and seeing it, all the Jungle River Cruise with the fire finale, I didn't know about that at all so that was a really nice surprise. It was good to see a more sort of up to date version if you like of Festival of the Lion King, that was nice with the stage and everything, what moved in the middle, uh, a lot more interactive. Toy Story Land, that was really nice as well, I think that looks a little bit better here than it was in Paris in terms of the details. Uh, Fantasyland, I think, is still one of the weakest, if not my, the weakest Fantasyland. Uh, I think it lacks, I mean, like your classic dark rides, especially like Snow White and Peter Pan's Flight. Uh, yeah, it really does lack those, but it's still nice, but just compared to the others, I don't think that's quite as nice. Maybe when the frozen area is in behind the train station that we mentioned earlier on, that'll really add to Fantasyland, but uh, yeah, overall, it's really nice. Tomorrowland, Hyperspace Mountain, yeah, that's been great really enjoyed hyperspace mountain Chewbacca. meet and greets have been good yeah chewy just looking back over it all it's been emotional normally this would be it the end we're flying back and we're really not we're flying to our next disney park this will be disney resort number five oh, for us five of six oh uh, it's great oh boy mickey's calling for us that is the end of this video make sure you check out our video from ocean park uh, online on the channel soon and also a very different video a vlog where i take you for a tour around the three resort hotels here at hong kong disneyland me me and Alex will see you oh, very, very soon. Tired. Another one of our vlogs. It's, it's tiring, isn't it? It's it tiring doing these trips. It's tiring, but you know what? You, you feel great. You feel so positive going to sleep. Like, well, sleep, I'm half asleep here. Yeah. Um, but no, it's just wonderful. And you guys should really get out here and experience it. And don't, don't be put off that it's in, in a completely very different content to what we're used to. Don't be put off. It's great. I think that sums it up really well. Thank you very much for watching. Me and Alex will see you in another vlog from our Asia Mega trip very, very soon. And from Hong Kong, that means it's time to cue those credits. See you later, guys.